What's up guys? Anthony here, Empire Music, EmpireMusic.com. Number at the shop, 412-343-5299. Get in contact with me directly at Anthony at EmpireMusic.com. That's the email address there. So showing you today uh, another new one out of the American Vintage 2 series from Fender, obviously. The silhouette should tell you that. Uh, this is the 66 Jazz Bass. Really, really cool instrument here. I've loved this line. Uh, there was the two P basses we've already done. Super slick jazz bass here. Love the 60s kind of vibe in a jazz bass. I think that's my favorite sort of era of it. Uh, 70s is really cool too. We get that bridge pickup back at that super kind of punchy mid-range. But I love the warmth and sort of the, that's in a way like that articulation that we get out of that out of that sort of uh, kind of lower mid-range accent we pull from the 60s character. Really dig it. So if you're not familiar with kind of where this line comes from or, or where it lies in the, in the Fender lineup, there was a series called the American Original, which for a few years I, I touted as, you know, really, really strong value if you were looking to kind of jump into kind of flirt with the Fender custom shop kind of vibe and the vintage thing, but you know, you didn't want to kind of break the bank on that. You hover around that $2,000 mark. Well, this replaces that. They just kind of, you know, they went back to a seven and a quarter radius on the fretboard here. And instead of going with like a decades approach, kind of the best of decades approach, now we're into specific years. Like I said, this is a specific 1966 jazz bass or a recreation of it. Uh, two piece alder body on there. Pure vintage pickups, but instead of just encompassing all of that 60s character, this is specifically a 66. The way I interpret it, and again, this isn't with like measuring any output, this is just with my a, a touch and approach and kind of what I interpret with you know, how I play and, and, and just what I'm kind of hearing in the room. And also knowing what I know year-wise of, of Fender stuff, a little always kind of influenced on what your knowledge base is. But this obviously um, is kind of pushing into that later 60s, a little bit hot, but still having some of that early 60s character. We're starting to approach the 70s kind of punch, but we, again, we still have the 60s pickup position in it, but music at that point's getting louder, so the basses are fighting higher gain guitars. What happens there is a really, really versatile instrument, and you'll really hear that when I start to dial in the specific pickup positions. Get some of that P bass character up here. We really get that that Jocko-y sort of jazz bass character out of the bridge pickup. And together, have that nice kind of scooped, uh, like the introduction of sort of the modern bass sound pre-active uh, electronics and things like that. Um, so again, pure vintage 66 pickups in there. Volume, volume tone. Got the tug bar here. Great color scheme in the sunburst with the torque guard. Bound fretboard on that guy. So kind of a nice touch there. 66 U neck. I'll say this, not generally my favorite neck profile. This, is, this thing feels sleek and really nice. Very, very modern. It almost feels like a C neck to me. And I, I, I've talked to other people out there and they agree with me on this. Anytime I get a bound fretboard, visually it looks thicker to me and it, and it tends to like, I interpret my, my mind plays tricks on me there where I think it's thicker than it is. I'm not catching any of that with this particular bass. I, I, I kind of dig that. And a round laminate fretboard, uh, rosewood fretboard on it. Vintage tall frets. And I know it has the plastic still on here. We're not gonna take that off because this bass is for sale at the time of shooting this video. Don't expect it to last very long though. So I'll put a link below to our current Fender custom shop bases depending on when you're watching this video. But the reverse gear lollipop tuners, I think it's such a nice classy touch. If you've seen my custom shop videos, I absolutely love the lollipop tuners on a jazz bass. I think it's really, really nice. Um, so sonically, what we did at the front of the video there was full tone, full volume, full volume. We'll go back to that, then we'll start to kind of dial in. We get out of each pickups. Might make some slight comments on it along the way as I normally do. Um, let's check it out. So again, everything kind of wide open here.
clear, real punchy, very bell-like kind of response out of that. Now, as we dial in just the bridge, or the, I'm sorry, the neck pickup, we start to get into that P-bass character, P-bass territory, get a little bit of hum out of that because now we're talking vintage style pickups. You get that 60 cycle hum because these are operating um, on their own. So you have single coil noise. Check it out. When we match the volume, it's a miracle. It goes right away because we have hum canceling then. So bridge, you get it. And neck, you get it. So we'll go just neck. Actually, let's go right quickly back to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, both together. Just the front. Super barky, super punchy. It's, it's never full P bass character. And as, as, a, as someone that, I guess I would consider myself somewhat of a P bass aficionado. I've played a ton of them. It's nearly 98% of the gigs that I play and, and, and sessions that I would play. And I'm, I'm taking a P bass with flats and a P bass with rounds. And a lot of times I'm missing that kind of jazz bass thing. Although recently I've, I've made some purchases to kind of alleviate that. Um, but nonetheless, it's almost P bassy. There's, I, I can't pinpoint what it is. If you know out there, drop me a line in the comments and tell me that, how you interpret the, 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 the single front pickup of a jazz bass versus a P bass, but there's something different. There's something inherently different to it. Maybe it's just the positioning of the, the, the magnetic field there. We don't have the split coil. Um, let's go back to the bridge pickup. So here, I'm confusing myself. <laughs> So just bridge. Just neck. Both together. That's like the coolest thing about a jazz bass. It's three distinctly different tones. They're, they're, all three of them are very, very useful. You can't go wrong either way. I mean, I love a P bass, but the versatility of a jazz bass is really, really hard to kind of beat there. So let's roll some tone off of that. Well, that's a little bit more than I know. Everyone knows I'm the 75, 80 guy on the tone. I'm going almost back to 50 there. And just front. Actually, put a little bit of tone on that now, just that front pickup. Super cool. That's a love that tone. Um, and we'll go just bridge. See where that uh, gets us with the tone control. Let me roll a little back off of that. Super cool. And then what I've been like digging too, showing in the videos is, is that you know, when we start getting into some chord stuff, how those notes separate. And I think that's a, that's a big thing that we catch a lower level, a lower line bass, a lower line instrument. We start to, notes can get kind of muddy together. So.
Very nice. Very, very clear with articulate playing. And that bridge picker probably sounds really good on that too. Yeah, totally. You always gotta check the harmonics on a jazz bass, right? Crystal clear. Love that in a jazz bass. So, American Vintage 2, 1966 jazz bass. Like I said, I'll put a link below. This guy's still in stock when you're watching it. It's obviously available. Give me a call at the shop, 412-343-5299. Email me directly, anthony at empiremusic.com. See you next time, thanks.